Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing good. In this video, I am going to talk about Azure Administrator interview questions and answers. If you are preparing for Azure Admin uh, role, then this video series is going to help you a lot. I'm going to make a video series uh, based on the services that Azure Administrator handles. So each uh, video will have a depth of uh, uh, information about the interview questions that uh, interviewers are asking. Uh, it includes the uh, basic information to advanced level of troubleshooting as well. So please do watch all the videos if you wanted to get more um, understanding about the questions that are asked and how to answer them. So this video, I'm going to uh, talk more about the type of questions that uh, interviewers are asking. Uh, so basically, I'm focusing more on uh, rules and responsibilities that you are going to explain to the interviewer and how you can project yourself and um, uh, what kind of non-technical questions they will be asking and a um, few technical questions on um, Azure uh, VM high availability. Okay, so to get started with it, um, before you answer the rules and responsibilities, you need to realize uh, what you are doing it currently. Uh, what are the tasks that you're handling? You should be very, uh, <clears throat> very, uh, you should have very good understanding about the tasks that you're handling on a day-to-day -day basis. If I start uh, talking about the roles and responsibilities, as an Azure administrator, I am responsible for managing the Azure infrastructure. So that, such, that includes <clears throat> creation of the virtual machines and uh, managing the virtual machines, ensuring that my VM is configured properly, which means the VM has <clears throat> been deployed in a correct subnet, correct VNet, and the location, and uh, in subscription as well, as well as the resource group. So basically, you do the validations uh, once the VM is deployed, correct? So once the VM is deployed, you need to ensure that the VM has properly uh, configured with the network, storage, storage means uh, disk configurations, uh, choosing the correct disk and number of disks that attached is correct. And uh, also you need to also ensure that the backup is configured. If the disaster recovery is, in, is applicable, you need to ensure that ASR is configured and um, you need to ensure that the monitoring also properly configured. So, so as part of your roles and responsibilities in day to day, you are going to uh, monitor this uh, VM uh, operations like uh, backup is configured, DR is configured, monitoring is configured. In case if you are opting for Azure Update Manager, you need to ensure that your VMs are connected to the uh, Update Manager and uh, done with the initial patching uh, before you deliver to the operations. Right, so sometimes uh, you get a request to um, add additional disk to your virtual machine um, because the given space for the virtual machine may not be sufficient all the time and uh, the initial projections were not estimated correctly. So you might have to add additional disk or detach a disk from the VM. And sometimes you have to take a snapshot of the disk uh, to troubleshoot or to have some backup of your disk. So these are a couple of roles and responsibilities that you know you handle as part of your day-to-day -day operations. And uh, adding to this, uh, you also have to uh, ensure that the daily compliance is in place. So when it's a daily compliance, your uh, VM backups are working well. And if you have a database uh, backups, so database backups are working well. In case if there are any issues, you are going to troubleshoot the failures, uh, be it a VM backup failures or database backup failures. You are going to troubleshoot in case if you need any help, you do research or you go back to Microsoft for an assistance. So at the same time, you need to ensure that the ASR replication into the continuous replication, the replication is in progress and you are not seeing any problems with the replication. In case if there is any server that is critical, you are going to troubleshoot those issues. And it is quite common that uh, people get uh, issues like they are not able to connect from application server to the database server or database servers to the application server, vice versa, or any other. Between the servers, uh, there could be some communication issues. Or, you know, sometimes users complain that they are not able to RDP to the server, not able to SSH to the server. So such kind of issues uh, as part of our day to day operations, you are going to troubleshoot those issues. Sometimes, uh, you know, if you're configuring patching, the patching might fail. 
you need to start troubleshooting why patching is failed. So as part of our, of our day to day operation, we are going to troubleshoot those patching failures and um, um, allowing the port, modifying the port in NSGs or network security groups. And um, sometimes uh, users also complain that they are not able to uh, access the application due to slowness. Uh, it could be due to your performance of your application server or web server or database server. As part of your roles and responsibilities, you are going to start monitoring the performance metrics and you know analyze which process, uh, which application is consuming more resources. Is it legitimate or do you need to go for the resize of the VM? So based on the analysis, you are going to take some action. So you are going to get such kind of request and you are going to handle them as well. Sometimes you'll be to get a request to uh, automate few tasks like uh, installing couple of applications inside or multiple Azure virtual machines. Let's say installing an antivirus, McAfee uh, or Sentinel-1 in multiple Azure virtual machines remotely, um, or you know, probably sometimes you have to uh, get some information from the waste level uh, for multiple machines. Let's say whether a specific application installed or not, you know, what is the version it is currently using it. So you might have to build a scripts and you might have to go with some kind of automation. So you get a request to do such kind of operations. Then you start creating PowerShell uh, scripts to uh, install the applications remotely. Maybe you will use uh, Azure automation run books to deploy or you know, to automate such kind of operations. So that is also part of our roles and responsibility. Also sometimes, um, you know, I get a request to build the VM with the configuration predefined. So I use ARN templates to, uh, you know, build the VM. So that can, that in, includes the uh, VM backups, ASR and uh, patching, monitoring, everything is already configured as soon as the VM built. So there is no manual efforts needed to uh, configure them post VM creation. So you start building the uh, ARN templates or use Terraform to uh, build some such templates as part of your roles and responsibilities. Sometimes uh, we do get a request to establish a connection between the two different VNets and uh, sometimes to create a connectivity between the two different tenants, uh, network components using private links or private endpoint services. So uh, depends on the requirement. Uh, I also created databases on Azure uh, SQL database or MySQL for uh, MySQL, MySQL databases. So we do have a uh, synchronization enabled from on-premise AD to Azure AD. So I take care of uh, you know, synchronization service in case of the synchronization is not happening. So I look at the synchronization service logs to understand why it is not synchronizing. And um, uh, creating users in Azure AD and groups in Azure AD uh, and providing them access to the subscription level or resource group level or a management group level. Sometimes I get a request to um, create some policies, custom policies for, uh, you know, business requirement. Let's say I want to enable um, monitoring for all Azure virtual machines through policy. So as soon as the VM is built, I want the VM to be connected to a specific log analytics workspace. So, or connect them or send the logs to a specific component like event hub. So such kind of policies that we can, can create and configure it and apply based on our requirement. So that is with regards to the policies and uh, our back. Um, so, I mean, the rules and responsibilities are more as Azure Administrator, you have to take care of many things. So these are a couple of them that you can start exploring. And uh, based on the uh, interviewer, uh, you can start um, you know, uh, adding more points. If they want to hear more from you, then you can start adding more uh, services that you handle as part of your roles and responsibilities. OK, so that is about the uh, explaining your roles and responsibilities. Um, it is. Um, the services that you handle on daily basis. Uh, but yes, um, this is all about it and uh, we can uh, add if needed. So some people would like to understand, you know, more about your non-technical stuff, like how your day starts. So my day starts by reading the emails and we use a ticketing tools like ServiceNow or, um, you know, Salesforce. We have a queue that our team monitors. So if anybody have any request or if there are any failures in our infrastructure, so those are automated and we get a ticket created. It could be an incident or a service request. 
So based on the uh, issue or type, then we start troubleshooting. So first I check my emails, then I start looking at my uh, ticketing tool, um, then to see you know how many tickets are in the queue and how many of them are handled, how many of them are not handled, then I start picking up them and start working on them to implement it. So we do have a change management process. We don't just go and uh, resize the VM or you know uh, just add a disk. I, though it is taking a five minutes uh, for me to, uh, you know, implement that change, but we need to follow certain process to get some approvals, business approvals as uh, in the public cloud, everything that you add, it incur the cost. So we get approvals and we get a downtime if required and we process the change. So then I interact with my team and, you know, we jump join a bridge call to understand uh, what kind of issues that they face in the previous shift, how to uh, handle them. And, you know, we take a handover from them, um, right? So that's how we start. That's how the day starts. And uh, it will uh, end up with, in, you know, joining some meetings with the customers and providing them suggestions in terms of application configurations for the, uh, and uh, VM configuration for the application. So that's how the day goes. And um, the tools that we use, um, they might ask, you know, what kind of tools that you are using in your environment uh, to handle the day-to-day -day operations. You can say always, we have a change management tool, uh, we have a ticketing tool like ServiceNow, Salesforce, BM Ceremony um, for change management and uh, tickets handling every day. And uh, you might say that we are using Azure DevOps to automate some task. You can say that you are uh, um, good with PowerShell and you do you write PowerShell script to automate a couple of daily operations. Um, if you are using any other tools that you are very much familiar, you can just talk about it. They might say what kind of requests you get on day to day basis. So keeping, I mean, uh, the regular issues to your side, the day to day service request to a request are like, you know, adding a port and a network security group to establish a connection between the application to database server. And I get a request to add a disk, detach a disk. I mean, whatever you have explained as part of your roles and responsibilities, you can just talk about them. And they might say, hey, explain the most recent critical issues that you have troubleshooted and what are your learnings from them. You can take any one of the most recent issue um, that you have fixed it. Maybe um, if I just take an example, um, like, you know, we say one of the customer uh, was complaining that they are experiencing the slowness on their application. And uh, as you know, the slowness can cause uh, because of various reasons. It could be uh, due to a network, it could be a, uh, due to a misconfiguration at a network end, or it could be a, at a server end. Maybe the server is really experiencing the performance issues. Maybe the application is not configured properly. The DB queries are not optimized properly. There could be various reasons. Maybe you can say, you know, we um, this needs a collaboration between multiple teams and um, um, and um, you know everybody have to start troubleshooting from them and uh, we need somebody to collaborate. So I've taken a lead on this and I've started working with the customer to understand, you know, what is their what is the actual behavior of the application? Is it a slowness uh, on a specific time frame or it is continuously slow? So try to understand more about the problem then started looking at my metrics at Azure VM and um, you know um, I started got to, I got to know that one of the application service that is consuming um, uh, you know more CPUs and uh, more uh, RAM but ideally as per the application behavior it is not supposed to consume such so I started uh, working with the application team and they started saying hey it's not an application issue but um, after a lot of multiple discussions and um, you know the uh, uh, data analysis uh, it was identified that the the application is using the older version of the java and uh, because of that uh, the processes java process consuming more resources then the application team have decided to upgrade the java version was that the issue has been fixed um, so this is something uh, very interesting for me because I have to uh, look at the various logs, even the application logs as well, and I have to do a proc man capture and uh, understand which process is consuming and uh, how much it is consuming. So I have to interact with multiple people and convince them to get this done. And they have been experiencing this issue for a long time. 
So this is uh, one of the critical issue that I uh, understood. And the learning that I had uh, based on this was, uh, we cannot take a decision, I mean, we cannot go with the one direction all the time. So you have to look at the multiple uh, places and um, read the logs and understand other teams opinion as well um, and uh, document such issues so that if the similar issues occur similar behavior occurs you will not see uh, you'll not take much time to you know fix it though the current issue took more time to resolve but i'm sure next time it won't because i've documented all the uh, challenges that i faced and i've tried to our uh, team members as well Okay, so these are a couple of uh, uh, examples you can give and just took a random example I'm given, but you can say um, maybe the back of failure issues, maybe the network connectivity between the uh, two servers or your user is not able to communicate to the, uh, connect to the user, uh, connect to the application or a VM. So whatever you have experienced and you think that is a most critical one and you have a great learnings, though the issue could be small and resolution also is a very common one. But if you have a great learnings, you can start explaining to the interviewer. Okay, this is about a, a non-technical part of it. In the next video, I'm going to uh, explain more about um, Azure VM interview questions. What is, how do you provide high availability for your VM? And um, what is availability set, availability zone? How are they going to help us in providing high availability for the applications running on the VM? And um, when to use availability set, when to use availability zone, and uh, how they work in the back end. What is fault domain and what is update domain, right? On these topics, how you get a questions and how to answer to the interviewer. At the same time, you must be heard about proximity placement group. This is a very good feature and uh, most of the customers have started opting for it. What it is and uh, how it is going to help you and uh, what is needed to configure this. Do we require downtime? What procedures to follow? And uh, another important feature that is accelerated networking. What happens without accelerated networking? What, what are you going to get with the accelerated networking feature? At the same time, since we're talking about high availability of application, how Azure load balancers going to help you? What are the different types of load balancer we have and uh, how it is going to help in providing high availability for your virtual machines and uh, applications running in it. And questions that are asked by interviewers on these topics. Okay, thanks everyone for watching this video. Um, please follow uh, remaining upcoming videos if you wanted to be very strong on the Azure administrator roles and responsibilities and you want to clear the interview questions.